Yesterday was Julia's birthday, and I've been watching her over the last month earnestly expecting for that day to come. She turned 10, and it was a big deal for her. And it was so much fun watching just how excited she was about that. Well, that's what we're talking about this morning. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. When the Bible uses the word creature here in the book of Romans, it's talking about all of the creation. So Paul is telling us about the earnest expectation of God's creation. Earnestly expecting, waiting, can't wait to see the manifestation or the, the bringing out, the bringing forth the revelation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. <clears throat> God allowed a curse to come upon the earth because of man's sin. But he also gave a promise that one day that curse would be reversed, that we would have new heavens, we would have a new earth, and that mankind would be redeemed completely from their sin. And so we hope in that. Now, we're talking about this kind of Bible hope this morning, and the Bible actually uses the word hope the way that you and I do on a regular basis, and it's kind of like this. I hope it rains. I'm pretty sure it's going to rain. It will rain right at the end of this dry spell. I hope it rains in a timely fashion, like this afternoon. Uh, we need it bad, okay? But I don't know for sure. I'm hoping that that happens, okay? Now, the Bible uses the word hope in that way, but the Bible also uses the word hope in the way that we're going to talk about. And this is what's so exciting. Bible hope is a hope that's a guarantee to come to pass. And so he says, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. So here's the result of the curse that God placed on this earth. He says it's Vanity, bondage, corruption, and pain. That's the result of the curse that you and I live in right now. Vanity, corruption, bondage, and pain. That's, that's this whole creation. We live in a situation where we deal with these things every day, and the result is the curse of sin. But we have a hope that one day that's all going to end. And so he goes on to say, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. See, the manifestation of the sons of God is going to take place at the resurrection whenever our bodies are redeemed and, and made new. Verse 24 says, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? And see, that's that's exactly what hope is. There's things that, you know, I, I looked outside this morning, it's not raining. But I sure hope that it does, okay? Now that's one kind of hope. But Bible hope is different. Bible hope is based on a promise of God. And it is an earnest expectation. It's like waiting on that birthday. It's not here yet, but I know it's coming. And when it gets here, it's going to be great. And so he says in verse 25, but if we hope for what we see not, then do we wait with patience for it? That's what Bible hope is. Patiently waiting for what is a guarantee that we know God is going to bring to pass. And that is that we're going to get to meet Jesus in the air. We're going to get a new body. We're going to have a whole new earth and a new heaven. And there's not going to be vanity, corruption, bondage and pain but there's going to be love and there's going to be life and there's going to be light and there's going to be this incredible fellowship with Jesus that's what we hope for god bless you have a great day